Okay, so we want to talk about conditional statements today. Um, and uh, I guess the first thing is what is a, a statement? In, um, in English, right, you have uh, several different types of, of uh, what, what, I don't know what it's called, without calling them statements, right? You got statements, you got questions, you got exclamations and things like that, right? So in uh, math, a statement has is the same kind of idea, okay? A, a statement is just a uh, sentence that ends with a period, all right? It's just a it's just a sentence, um, but any kind of sentence about math, okay? So a math sentence doesn't actually have to have words in it, right? Um, so I can say like A B is equal to B C. That's technically a sentence, okay? Um, because it reads like a sentence. A B is equal to B C. That is a that is an actual sentence, right? So, so this is a statement. Okay. Um, what we want to talk about today is a conditional statement. All right. So a a conditional uh, statement is all about choice. Okay. Um, but specifically, it's it's more of an on-off kind of thing. Is it true or is it false? Okay. Um, so. Uh, for example, um, let me think of a let me think of a good for example here. Um, all right, we'll just do we'll we'll do this. We'll do a, a wake up time. Okay. Um, so the, the way a conditional statement works is um, you go into a situation, all right? So here you go. You go in. It's time to wake up, all right? Now, if it's a uh, weekend, what time would that be? 11? I'm proud of you. That's it. At least it's before noon, right? But if it's a weekday, what time would that be? Eh, 6 a.m., right? Okay. So this is a conditional, all right? You go into the situation, and then you say, okay, if it's this, then do this. If it's this, then do that, okay? It establishes rules for a pattern. But it essentially allows you to start to branch off and do other things. Um, in computer science, uh, conditional statements are, are how computer programs work. Uh, without them, there are no such things as video games, okay? Um, uh, it is an essential idea where you go in and you say, okay, now I have to make a decision, all right? So I look at my parameters, I say, okay, it's a weekend, okay, I get up at 11. Or if it's a weekday, I get up at 6, okay? Uh, so that's conditional, all right? That's what that means. It means that there's a choice involved, um, and that choice usually is just true or false. Okay, is it a weekend? Yes or no? Is If it's not a weekend, then it's a weekday, right? There's only two possible uh, choices there. Okay, so here just um, an idea, uh, reinforcing the idea of a statement, okay? The statements are just sentences like the earth is big or angles can be measured or a line is infinite and continuous and straight. Um, the statement has subject and predicate. All right, this is standard English, or it's not even standard English. It's standard any language, right? Um, that's how uh, languages are, are structured, okay? So a conditional statement um, provides some kind of a situational rule um, that uh, allows us to evaluate. So, uh, for example, the first sentence here is, if the sky is overcast, then it might rain, okay? So the word overcast means like cloudy, right? So we look outside, you do this all the time, you look outside the window and you see, ah, oh, there's, there's no clouds in the sky, okay? It's not gonna rain, you understand? It's like, we're pretty really positive here. There's a chance of rain today, does not look like it's gonna happen, okay? Um, uh, so overcast, uh, it, then it might rain. Uh, but we do that too, right? You look outside and there's all clouds and they're super dark gray. And you're like, wow, man, I better bring an umbrella, 
Okay, that's a conditional statement or a conditional thought at least. Okay, um, then a mathematical one. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM is equal to MB. All right, so we can actually draw that one. Um, so uh, let's see. If I have a line segment, oops, sorry about that. And I've got, so AB on the line segment. And then I put M down as the midpoint. What does that mean? Right, it means that AM and MB are the same length. Does that make sense? Like we can draw that picture. Um, but if M is not the midpoint of AB, all right, so does that mean that AM is equal to AB? I don't know. But if it is, okay, then this is true. So that's a conditional statement, all right? You look at the first part and you say, okay, does this apply? And if the answer is yes, then you look at the next part and you say, okay, so this is true as a result, okay? Um, all right. The interesting thing is, though, that if uh, the first part of the sentence doesn't apply, then the second part um, cannot be uh, used, all right? So, for example, in the first statement, if the sky is overcast, we look outside today, the sky is not overcast. So this statement does not apply. We don't even care about what happens in the second part, okay? Um, because the sky is not overcast, the rule doesn't apply. So we throw it out, right? You think about going to an amusement park, right? You go to an amusement park or a you know, fairgrounds, right? The fair, uh, and you go to ride the rides, there's a little height chart, okay? Um, I have not had to worry about a height chart since I was like four. Um, I don't actually know if that's true. I don't. When I was, four foot is you know, usually how tall it is, right? Forty-eight inches. I don't. When was I forty-eight inches tall? I don't remember. Um, but I, I like never think about height charts. Uh, although that said, um, I do. Uh, I have started to run into the opposite problem, right? Being too tall. Um, I'm almost too tall to fly fighter jets. I believe 6'3 or 6'4 is like the limit because of the cockpit, uh, head clearance in the cockpit. Um, uh, so I'm almost too tall to fly fighter jets. Um, and there are certain uh, rides at amusement parks um, where it is very uncomfortable for me to get in because my shoulders are too, too tall. That, that overhead strap just kind of depresses you. Uh, Thunderbird at uh, Holiday World is the uh, is the the big culprit there. It's very uncomfortable. Um, uh, anyway, um, so uh, but yeah, so I mean I don't I don't worry about the height chart because I'm I'm taller than 48 inches, so I never think about it. But you get people who are shorter, all right? Uh, and those people worry about the height charts all the time. Okay, they, they go to the amusement park. It's like, am I going to be tall enough? To ride all the rides. Um, I've had some. I've had some friends who were very, very small. Um, you know, four uh, ten or four eleven, and uh, uh, you know, you start to you start to get into rides where you where you're not allowed to ride. Um, so for me, the height chart rule doesn't apply. I don't think about it. Um, but for other people, it does apply. So they do think about it. Does that make sense? Um, so that's another thing that you that comes into play with a conditional statement. If the first part doesn't apply to you, then the rule, you don't worry about it. You don't think about it, okay? Um, driving a car, for example, right? I can just go drive a car. You cannot, uh, generally speaking, right? So for you, age limit uh, on giving a driver's license uh, is, is something you worry about, something you think about. Um, but for me, it's not something I think about, okay? Because uh, the rule doesn't apply. All right, so that's a conditional statement. Now, a conditional statement has two parts, okay? The first part is the hypothesis, and the second part is the conclusion, okay? So if I look at this um, sentence here, if the sky is overcast, then it might rain, then this first part right here, this is called the hypothesis. Okay, the hypothesis is a requirement that must be fulfilled in order for the rule to apply to you. Okay, um, so if the sky is overcast, that's the hypothesis. So the, the requirement then is 
the sky is overcast. The requirement is not if the sky is overcast, all right? The requirement is just the sky is overcast. Does that make sense? The if is not part of it, okay? Um, and then the uh, result, the conclusion is it might rain. Okay, so we would write, all right, the result then is it might rain. Not it will rain, just it might rain. Okay. So that's that's the basic idea for today's notes, for today's lecture, right? Or the, the homework assignment the, is just look at the sentence. What is the hypothesis? What is the conclusion? All right. Um, now, sometimes um, in English, uh, uh, we can start doing some funny things with the language, all right? As uh, most people who are second language English learners uh, know, all right, English is stupid. Other languages have much better rules. The English language is horrible. We have so many exceptions, okay? Uh, so many, um, uh, you know, uh, just, that's really, there's, there's so many exceptions to the rules. Um, so here's an example. We won't play golf during a thunderstorm. Okay, this is an if-then statement. But there is no if and there is no then. The words are implied inside the sentence. You actually have to analyze it to figure out which part is which. So we won't play golf during a thunderstorm. Okay, which part of these things is the requirement for not playing golf or for the rule? All right, right. We're worried about the thunderstorm. Okay, that's the thing that's going to stop us. Does that make sense? Go not golfing isn't going to create a thunderstorm. Okay, um, but the thunderstorm might stop us from golfing. So the thing that comes first is the thunderstorm. So this guy is the hypothesis. That means the conclusion is what? Not playing golf, right? That's your conclusion. So um, the, we would say if there is a thunderstorm, you got to write it as a sentence, right? So there's a thunderstorm, all right? And then the conclusion will be, well, we won't play golf. Although I've actually done it, and it is quite thrilling. You gotta get the last three or four holes in as the very, very dark clouds start to roll in. I was on a par three though when we did it, so it's pretty easy to just just finish up. I missed that old golf course. It was in a Logan Sport. There was a par three called Rolling Hills. It was like five dollars to play. And you just you didn't even carry your whole bag. You carried your your eight iron, your fishing wedge, and your putter. You left everything else in the car, like four golf balls, because there was no sand traps or water. So you just had to not hit it in the woods. And there was only one of those. So a nice little golf course. Um, they stopped taking care of it, though, so it died. It was very sad. All right. So um, we can write then this in an if-then statement now. So once we analyze it, okay, once we analyze it, we can then write the if-then statement. So uh, we won't play golf during a thunderstorm becomes this. All right, so the hypothesis comes first. So if during a thunderstorm, so if it's storming, All right, that's just a rephrase of during a thunderstorm, it's storming. Um, and then uh, we won't play golf. All right, does that make sense? So we're just looking at a sentence, you're saying, okay, reverse it. Wait, you might think, what does this have to do with geometry? Okay, 
Um, it's easier to talk about um, the way sentences work if you just talk about regular sentences, okay? Um, the actual, uh, the actual like uh, geometry here comes into play with like a sentence like, uh, uh, like perpendicular lines. You don't have to write this down. Form right angles. Okay. So the application here is that you have a sentence like perpendicular lines form four right form four that ah, form right angles, right? And then you start to think about what's the requirement and what's the conclusion here. Okay. Well, the requirement is that lines are perpendicular. So we would say if uh, two lines are perpendicular. then uh, they form right angles. So if you're wondering, right, as we're talking about storms and golf and, and things like that, uh, you know, what is the application here? It's just that it's more interesting to talk about those other things than it is to talk about geometry while we're talking about how sentences are written, okay? Um, so uh, you always wanna simplify as, as best you can. Um, and so if you can take the math out of it, whenever you can, then that's what you should do. So that's what's going on here. Uh, if you're trying to make a connection between what we're talking about and where we're going. All right, so um, truth though in a conditional statement is um, uh, different, okay? Um, so here are two conditional statements, all right? And a conditional statement can be true or false, all right? So the first uh, statement, if M is the midpoint of AB and AM is equal to MB, that is always true. Okay, that is always true. That's what it means to be a midpoint. A midpoint means to be drawn right in the middle of the sentence, right? That's what it means. Uh, right in the middle of the uh, line. Oh, when I find a midpoint, okay, I just go to the middle of the line. That's where it's at. It's there. Okay. But the second one, the second statement, is actually not always true. If AM is equal to MB, then M is the midpoint of AB. That's not always true, right? It kind of seems like it might be true, uh, but uh, I can draw a picture where it's not. So the first one, the first line goes like this. And we start to think about whether it's true or false. If M is the midpoint of AB, that's the requirement, okay? So the requirement is that they're equal, okay? So, or not the, it's not that they're equal, but that it's a midpoint. So here's a line segment AB, and M is the midpoint. Right? Well, the midpoint is equidistant from the ends. So AM is equal to MB. True. Okay. The second part um, is a little bit different, though. It just says that AM is equal to MB. So let's draw that picture. All right. So first we draw AM. Okay. And then we draw MB so that it's the same length. So here we have AM, maybe it's 10 units. So we measure out 10 units and we put down B. Ah, well there it is true, okay? But are we required to continue in a straight line to draw MB? This did not require me to draw a straight line, right? It just required me to make them equal. So I could draw this picture. Here's AM, which is maybe 10 units. And then instead of going straight, let's turn. There's 10 units, that's MB. All right, so AM and MB are the same length, but is M a midpoint? It's not, right? So this thing over here, this is called a counter example. We'll talk more about counter examples on Wednesday. We'll talk about them all today and, and all tomorrow, but then Wednesday, your activity is about counter examples specifically. Okay? A counter example is just a, uh, a, a, a thing that shows that the requirement doesn't work. Okay? So if the requirement is AM equals MB, and the result is that M is the midpoint of AB, right, then this rule doesn't make sense. The reason why it doesn't make sense 
is because there's a situation where a m is equal to m b and that the result doesn't apply. So the statement is false. Okay. Um, sometimes it's true, but if sometimes is is your uh, reasoning, then your requirement isn't a is not a requirement. Does that make sense? Um, it, it doesn't because there's a case where it doesn't fit. Uh, a rule and then only should apply um, if there are no exceptions to it. Does that make sense? Um, and uh, this is actually um, the uh, this idea uh, forms like a moral ground. So if we want to start tar talking about law, right? You can start looking at laws and analyzing whether or not a law is a good one um, based on the the results of the countering thing. Okay. Um, if you if you have a, a, a law uh, and it says okay this is the this is the requirement, but then people get around it, that doesn't make it a good law, right? You think about um, tax exemptions. This is a good a good one, right? Like you know, does everybody pay their fair share tax in the United States? The answer is no, because we have lots of loopholes. So the tax law um, from this particular idea, this idea of, of truth and validity to your hypothesis and your conclusion, a lot of times doesn't make any sense. Okay, um, and the argument against that kind of a thing comes from this topic. Okay, uh, so this is the sort of like the beginning lesson of a, of a unit that's called logical reason. Okay. Um, logical reasoning is uh, the first time you do it is uh, really do it in geometry, okay? Um, but the actual skill that you learn when you do geometry, the uh, idea of logical deduction, um, that is the same skill that is used um, anytime you have a professional that is evaluating a situation and then making a decision based on what they observe, all right? Which is like every scientist ever, right? Every doctor, when you visit the doctor, okay, and you sit down and they go through your symptoms, you know, and then they say, okay, you know the symptoms, so this is what's wrong with you. Okay, that's logical reason. Or if you go to a court, right, and the lawyers stand up and they, they present the evidence and then you try to make a, uh, a decision based on the evidence. All right, that's logical deduction, that's logical reason. Okay, so this is the foundational idea for that topic, okay. Um, and the idea is, if your evidence um, does not match your conclusion, then your rule is false and you throw it out, okay? So it's the goal of lawyers when they're arguing in a trial, right? Is to show that the evidence the other guy presents doesn't fit. Okay? You're looking for counterexamples. If you can't find a counterexample, okay, then you lose the case, right? That's the deal, right? Okay. All right. Um, this uh, idea is a very, this is the last idea, the last slide here. This is a very complicated idea. I'm actually going to stop the video because it doesn't, this, this part doesn't matter.